Hey guys, welcome back to ATU Audio. Today on the channel, the people have spoken and the next project up is gonna be this realistic STA 2100. And so a little bit about this unit. And so the 2100 made by realistic uh, was actually the one that had the toroidal transformer in it. And Pioneer actually tried to sue them over this unit because that was patented technology back then. And so later on, they pulled this and they came out with the 2100D, which actually stands for Dobie, and it was the non-toroidal uh, transformer edition. I think Realistic gets a lot of flack on their receivers, but they really made some gems, uh, if you know which ones to look out for. And this is one of them. I think it's every bit as good as some of the top brands of, of the time, the Pioneer, the Sansui, and the Brants. It sounds beautiful. I've restored a few of these and I really like them. So. Uh, Let's go ahead and we'll dive in and we'll start talking about this unit. So this particular unit uh, has had a rough life. So the case has been pretty banged up pretty good. The power cord is cut on this one as well. So we can't even test it for power. And so I like to talk about this because I want you guys to go through the mindset of like you receive this unit and what you would do about it. So usually when I see a power cord cut, there's a couple of things that go through my mind. One, angry wife, lover, girlfriend that hated you and your stereo equipment. And so they were cut the power cord. The next big reason that I've always come to is that there was a bad short, the unit was smoking or something. And so in order to lock out, tag out the unit, they cut the power cord so that no one could accidentally plug it up and cause more damage or cause a fire. So, and then there's always option number three guys where the cord was damaged and because it was damaged, someone just finished cutting it off and it actually works. I've actually had that happen a couple times and I've been really, really surprised because usually when I go into these, I'm thinking that if there's a bad short somewhere and someone just basically cut the power cord to protect the unit or again, like a fire damage type thing. So that's kind of the story on this unit. So the first thing we need to do guys is restore power to the unit and then test that theory and see if there's actual short or not. And then we can start diagnosing from there. So I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys in closer. I'm going to open the top and we'll just take a visual look inside this unit to see if there's anything going on there. So here we are back inside the unit and I'm actually very surprised when I open this unit. It's actually really clean. And from what I can tell, it doesn't really like, look like this unit was used very much. Um, so that kind of leads me to suggest whatever problem there was, was early on. And then it was kind of put off to the side in the room and just stored. So, uh, that's probably good news for this receiver, so I don't think there'll be too much left to do. Uh, these are both the uh, amp board uh, for the left and right channel. And so I've just done a quick visual inspection there, and I don't see anything that would stick out to me as a short. doesn't mean there isn't one, but I don't see any burn-up resistors on any one of these boards. This is the uh, power supply board. And one thing I noticed when I opened the case up is a fuse came out. It just fell out of the back bottom of the case. And so... That might be as simple as a fix of why it wasn't powering up, or maybe that was the causing the short because that fuse was loose in there. So that's a possibility as well. The next big thing I saw, guys, was on these particular units, um, the power switch would usually went faulty and would cause problems. And so this power switch on this unit has been bypassed. So the power comes in over here, and the switch is over here on this side, and that power switch has been bypassed. So basically, if this is plugged in, it's on. And so luckily, I have an extra switch for one of these. So I, I, well, I, so I think the way I'm gonna tackle this, guys, is uh, replacing the switch, getting power to the unit, and then hooking it up to my dim bulb tester and making sure we don't have any shorts. And then I've got a, the, the fuse is loose in there, so I've gotta make sure I clamp that down and put that fuse back. So I'm gonna flip this over, guys, so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about as far as the switch being bypassed. This is what I mean by the switch. So the power comes in here, and that's where the power cord is cut. And so you'll notice on this, there's a red and a white wire here. And that red and white wire runs up here to the power switch up here. But if you notice, somebody's taking a wire tie and they basically just jumped the uh, red and the white wire. So that means that the switch is not functional, that when this unit is plugged in, it's powered on. So either there was a short or somebody didn't realize this or something's going on. So at the first angle of attack, guys, is going to be getting a new power cord to this unit. And then uh, I may leave this uh, for the time being to evaluate if maybe there's a short. Uh, and because I don't think the short's obviously going to come from the switch. So I'll probably get a power cord, guys, on this and go from there. And then we'll test the rest of this out on the dim bulb and see if there's any shorts. But everything that I've seen so far visually looks really, really good. So uh, 
who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky and maybe this won't really be that complicated. Either way, guys, what I'm going to do to this unit is recap and put new transistors on the power supply board. And at a minimum, I'll do that board and I'll also do both the amp boards as well. If the output transistors are okay on this, I'll leave them there, but all the other caps and transistors on those amp boards uh, will get replaced. And I may do the protection board for good measure as well. And if I do that, guys, this thing's going to be uh, sounding and looking great. And uh, the case is pretty banged up, so this may be one where I make a custom case for as well. I do have another old uh, 2100 case laying around, so I could use that as well. But we'll just see when we get there. So I'm going to go ahead, guys, and let's get to work on trying to get a power cord attached here. Okay, so here we are back at the stereo receiver. And so this is the power cord here as we were talking about previously. So this wire is uh, comes through this back panel and it is connected through a, a, a grommet here. So I'm gonna have to compress that grommet to get that out. And then you'll see that there's this wire comes and it connects to the back of the prongs here on both sides of this uh, outlet, which is the outlet that goes on the back of the panel. So what we'll have to do is heat these up a lot and then once that solder breaks free, we'll just pull those out, run the new wire in, and then re-solder it. From there, guys, we'll connect it to our dim bulb tester. And once we turn that dim bulb tester on, remember the switch has been bypassed on this re receiver, so it'll have power. So then from there, we'll be able to see what we're going to do. And that's probably all we're going to do in this video is just restore power to it and see if we've got any bad shorts. And then from there, we'll continue diagnosing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera because it'll be really hard for me to get a good view and my hand will be constantly in the way here. So there's not gonna be a lot for you guys to see. But again, that process is I'm gonna have to really heat up these uh, uh, solder points and then just pull that wire off. Once the solder's really heated up really well, I'm actually just gonna be able to pull this wire right off because it'll get loose. And sometimes this is a real big pain in the butt. And so uh, I don't enjoy doing it, but it's necessary and so we need to make sure we do it. If you also notice there's a resistor here that goes to frame and so I'm going to make sure that we replace that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off cameras and we'll see you guys in a few minutes. All right so that actually didn't wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It went pretty smooth. So I've got the new cord uh, soldered in to both of these and so now guys uh, all we have to do is plug it into our dim bulb tester and kind of see what happens. So I want to zoom you guys out so you can see the dim bulb tester because I don't know what it's going to do. Um, if it lights really brightly, I'm going to turn it off immediately. If it doesn't light, uh, we'll go from there and we'll see if we get a relay click. Now, because the switch is bypassed, as soon as we turn on that dim bulb tester, uh, this unit will have power to it. However, there is another circuit that actually not just gives power to it, but I guess tells it to, to work. So we will actually have to push the switch in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And let's see if we get a relay click or if anything else is wrong with it. So this will be kind of interesting. So I didn't replace that other fuse either yet. Um, so there's always a potential uh, that that fuse could be what's going to the short, but I kind of doubt it. So I'm gonna change the camera view and then let you guys see as I turn this thing back on. So let me go ahead and change that camera view and we'll be right back. So we got it back up ready to plug it in. So here's my dim bulb tester. So let's go ahead and plug that in guys. Now, as soon as I flip the switch, this stereo should have power. So let's see what happens. Okay, so the bulb lit up and we quickly went out. Oh man, we got a relay click. So right now, technically this thing should make music. So I'm very surprised. So we know at a minimum, probably there's something wrong with this switch. That's the reason why they bypassed it. But uh, I wonder if that was the only thing that was wrong with it, guys, is the switch and someone just cut off the power cord for no reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and power this down. So that's kind of unusual. So we may have lucked out. And so I think that's where we're gonna end it today, guys. So all we did today was really uh, diagnose that the power switch uh, had an issue and it was bypassed. We also installed the new cable and then we hooked it up and we got relay click. So I have another switch uh, for this. So on the next video, we'll go ahead and replace that power switch and I'll show you guys how to do that. And we'll also probably change out that fuse <clears throat> that was loose. 
and then go from there on restoring this. So we may have lucked out and there may not have been a lot wrong with this receiver. The inside actually looked great. It looked like it'd been stored very well. Other than the physical damage to the case outside, the unit's actually in really good shape. And so uh, this might be the diamond in the rough that uh, sometimes you get. So we might have lucked out. So <clears throat> thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned. This was part one. Uh, hopefully in the next week or so, we'll get a part two and we'll get that power switch uh, changed out. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.